subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lipakshi khurana here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 22nd of March. New Delhi ranks as world's most polluted capital for fourth consecutive year. Muslim countries responsible for Islamophobia after 9-11, says Pakistan Prime Minister at OIC summit. And death toll climbs to at least 10 in ferry accident in Bangladesh. And now for all the details. Indian capital New Delhi was found to be the most polluted capital city in the world for the fourth consecutive year in 2021, according to a recently released World Air Quality Report. The study states six of the world's most polluted cities are in India, underscoring the need for tougher measures to combat toxic air. India's capital New Delhi was the world's most polluted capital for the fourth straight year in 2021, according to a recent report by Swiss group IQA, underscoring the need for tougher measures to combat toxic air that causes severe respiratory diseases. According to the report, New Delhi saw a 14.6% increase in poisonous PM2.5 concentrations in 2021, with the pollutant levels rising to 96.4 micrograms per cubic meter for 84 micrograms in 2020. The study showed air pollution caused an estimated 54,000 premature deaths in Delhi in 2020, showing a higher toll than any other big global city. It also states six of the world's most polluted cities were in India. New Delhi residents expressed that they were affected by vehicular pollution. So, Harjan is not public transport. So, we have to go to the house. 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 We have Every winter, when the air in Delhi turns toxic due to stubble burning in neighboring agrarian states of Punjab and Haryana, the city authorities are forced to shut down schools and more children end up at hospitals with breathing difficulties. A Lancet study for 2019 showed 1.67 million people had died due to air pollution in India. And in the first hike in over four months, the fuel prices have been raised in India. Petrol and diesel prices were raised by over 80 paise a litre on Tuesday, while domestic cooking gas prices were increased by rupees 50 per cylinder. Despite volatility in the international crude oil market, the government took a series of duty cuts to keep the fuel rates unaffected. Since the last hike in November, crude oil prices have shot up over 25%. Petrol and diesel prices in India were hiked by 80 paise a litre each, while domestic cooking gas prices were increased by rupees 50 per cylinder on Tuesday. While petrol and diesel prices had been on a freeze since November 4, ahead of the assembly elections in states like Uttar Pradesh and Punjab, the LPG rates were last revised on October 6. The latest price increase means consumers will pay less than one person more at the pump despite a substantial increase in global oil prices since the conflict in Ukraine began last month and a falling Indian rupee. Petrol price in Indian capital has gone up from Rs 95.41 to Rs 96.21 per litre, while diesel will now cost Rs 87.47 a litre as against Rs 86.67 per litre. A 14.2 kg non-subsidized LPG cylinder will now cost Rs 949.50. Commuters in Delhi shared their ordeal saying the price hike will affect their monthly budget and expenses. Price upar badte ja rahe sir. Iske liye middle class ke bare mein bhi kuch sochna chahiye government ko. Hum log isse bahut prabhavit hote hain jaise hi petrol ke rate badte hain sir. To hum government se yahi request karenge ki please kripa karke jo hai petrol pe thodi si lagam lagai jaye taki middle class walon ko bhi thoda sa jeevan mil jaye. 
Opposition parties also protested in the parliament against the increase in prices of petrol, diesel and LPG cylinders. While the protesters staged a walkout demanding a rollback in the lower house, the upper house was adjourned amid the chaos. India, the world's third biggest oil importer and consumer, ships in about 85% of its oil needs from overseas market. Its local diesel and petrol prices are linked to international prices of the two fuels, which directionally follow increases in the crude oil prices. And U.S. President Joe Biden has singled out India among the Quad group of countries for being somewhat shaky in acting against Russia, its biggest supplier of military hardware. India has urged an end to the violence in Ukraine but has abstained from voting for sanctions against its old Cold War ally. U.S. President Joe Biden on Monday said only India among the Quad group of countries was somewhat shaky in acting against Russia over its invasion of Ukraine as India tries to balance its ties with Russia and the West. India is the only Quad member not to have condemned the invasion. It has urged an end to the violence in Ukraine but has abstained from voting against Russia, its Cold War ally and the biggest supplier of military hardware. India's foreign ministry, after a virtual summit between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison on Monday, said that Australia, a Quad member, understood India's position on Ukraine, which reflected our own situation, our own considerations. In response to his aggression, there has been, he's, we presented a united front throughout NATO uh, and in the Pacific. Uh, the Quad is, with the possible exception of India, being somewhat shaky on some of this, but Japan has been extremely strong, so has Australia, in terms of dealing with Putin's aggression. Biden's remarks came as the U.S. Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Newland, and Indian Foreign Secretary Harshwardhan Shringla met in New Delhi on Monday, with talks focusing on two plus two ministerial dialogues and also the Ukraine crisis. Even though India has grown close to the United States in recent years, it still depends on Russia for a continuous supply of arms and ammunition amid a Himalayan border standoff with China and perennial tension with Pakistan. News from Pakistan. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Tuesday said Islamophobia grew after the 9-11 terror attacks and went on unchecked because the Muslim countries did nothing to check the wrong narrative that Islam was equated with terrorism. He made the remarks while addressing the inaugural session of a conference of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation in Islamabad. The 48th session of Council of Foreign Ministers of OIC the Organization of Islamic Cooperation began in Pakistan's capital Islamabad on Tuesday with more than 600 delegates attending, including Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi invited as a special guest. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan in his keynote address said Islamophobia grew after the 9-11 terror attacks and went on unchecked because the Muslim countries did nothing to check the wrong narrative that Islam was equated with terrorism. But the world is realizing it is a reality, he said, as he lauded the recent resolution by UN General Assembly against Islamophobia. Speaking about the Afghan humanitarian crisis post-Taliban takeover, PM Khan said that it is extremely important that OIC nations together stabilize Afghanistan with aid for the country among the summit's ambitious agenda. Khan also suggested member countries should discuss how to mediate and bring about a ceasefire in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The two-day OIC conference comes amid political turmoil in Pakistan with the parliament to hold a session on Friday over no-confidence motion filed by the opposition against PM Khan, blaming him for mismanaging the economy and rising inflation. And moving on, locals and political activists have raised concern over rising inflation, lawlessness and corruption in Gilgit, Baltistan that has continued to afflict the common public in the illegally occupied region. Over the past few months, residents have held several protests against black marketing and stalled development projects, but their voices remain unheard. Locals and political activists in Gilgit, Baldistan have expressed anger over rising inflation, lawlessness and corruption in the illegally occupied region that continues to haunt them. 
Over the past few months, residents have held massive protests against black marketing and shortage of food supply, but their voices remain unheard. Apart from lack of basic facilities, political activists claim lawlessness and corruption by the government officials have added more burden to woes of people, while the Pakistan government repeatedly turns a blind eye to their problems, making Gilgit Baldistan one of the most backward regions. <laughs> बुरे तरह ठीक है कि नहीं महंगाई के शक्ल में या कानूनियत के शक्ल में जहां जाओ दफातर वैरान हो चुके हैं बैठ चुके हैं वहां साइलेंट के काम हल नहीं होते हैं करप्शन बढ़ गई है अगरा परवरी बढ़ गई है और इस तरह के बहुत सारे मसाइल हैं जो आवाम को इस वक्त फेस कर रहे हैं तो इंशाल्लाह नाजिस Pakistan Muslim League known PDM or People's Party ne jo ek damat uthaye hain inshallah aziz jamhuriyat bahal hone ke baad ye tamam masail hal honge Pakistan had promised of jobs education and prosperity in Gilgit Baltistan as part of the China Pakistan economic corridor however locals claim the policy is framed by Islamabad only aim to alter the demography and systematically secure the ownership of the lands possessed by locals and moving on to news from Bangladesh, the death toll in a ferry capsize incident in Narayan Ganj district in central Bangladesh climbed to at least 10 after two more bodies were recovered on Tuesday. Dozens had went missing after the small ferry known as Launch, packed with passengers, collided with a cargo vessel and sank on Sunday on the Shita Lakshya River, the latest waterway tragedy to hit the nation. Nearly 20 passengers had reportedly jumped off the ferry and some managed to swim ashore or were rescued by nearby boats. The Bangladesh Inland Water Transport Authority has filed a murder case against eight cargo officials in connection with the incident, local media reports said. Hundreds of people die each year in ferry accidents in Bangladesh, a low-lying South Asian country that has extensive inland waterways but lacks safety standards. And the third edition of Connect India Nepal International Entrepreneurship Conclave aimed at bringing entrepreneurs of both the countries together is set to be held in capital Kathmandu on March 23rd. As per the organizers, the event will celebrate stories about passion, hard work and commitment to fight the odds, especially during the start of any entrepreneur journey. The conclave is co-organized by Clock Business Innovations and Embassy of India in Kathmandu. In the three phases of the process, 20 startups were mentored and trained by personalities from the entrepreneurial ecosystem for nine days. Four from 20 were selected for the finale, which will be held on Wednesday. Which our Prime Minister had said a few years ago while uh, highlighting India's policy towards startup. Uh, startups and innovation. He said that we may have a million problems uh, in our country, but we also have a billion minds uh, to solve them. And that's, I think, the very, uh, very spirit behind uh, our support for startups in our government policy and in our uh, industrial policy as well. And India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory is all set to launch a charm offensive on visitors in the upcoming tourist season as preparations have reached the final stages for opening the Tulip Garden, the largest such garden in Asia. Asia's largest tulip garden in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory is visited by thousands of tourists every year. The Tulip Garden, situated on the foothills of Zabarwan Range with an overview of the famous Dal Lake, is expected to be thrown open for tourists and locals in coming days. With the tourism season in the valley set to begin in April, preparations for opening the garden for public and for the Tulip Festival have reached the final stages. The entire workforce in the garden, including gardeners, masons, painters and electricians, are working to make the garden ready. Gardeners are doing different jobs under the supervision of officials of the Floriculture Department. The gardeners, our officers, here for about 8-9 months, are working for this garden. In the evening, in the rain, 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 and in the rain, in the rain. और इस गार्डन को जब देखने के लिए आते हैं इस कश्मीर वादी में एशिया का जो सबसे बड़ा गार्डन माना जाता है हमें उम्मीद है इस साल अच्छी तरीके से हमारा गार्डन हमारा गार्डन ठीक चलेगा तो और साथ ही साथ जो मेहमान यहां आएंगे वो भी खुश रहेंगे क्योंकि इन्होंने काम भी अच्छा किया है कि और फूल भी अच्छी तरीके से आए हैं द फ्लावर्स आर एक्सपेक्टेड टू ब्लूम फुल्ली इन फ्यू डेज 
Apart from tulips, many other species of flowers have also been added. Locals in the region heavily depends on tourism for livelihood, and Tulip Garden has played a vital role in boosting the sector. Tulip Festival attracts tourists before the summer season from all over the world and also helps open more employment avenues for the locals. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.